Hello, and thank you for joining, joining us again on Searching for Answers. We're having a wonderful time in the book of Luke. book of Luke is in the New Testament. And if you have your Bibles, different versions of the Bible is even good, isn't it? And then go to chapter 6, and we're going to carry on with where we left off last time. And uh, my name is Carolyn Thompson, and on my right is... I'm Gerald Winslow from Loma Linda University. And John Jones, La Sierra University. And John Brunt, the Azure Hills Church. Well, I think that uh, by now our viewers hopefully have their Bibles. And we're going to turn to chapter 6, and we're going to begin... Um, let me see, uh, judging others? Yeah, we just read that. We can read it again, and then mm -hmm. shall I move on from yes, that? Yes, okay. uh-huh. Good. Uh, so we're in verse 37 of chapter 6, and I'll just read that again and keep sure. right on going into right. the, the following Good. verses. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And verse 39, Jesus also told him this parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they both not fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Verse 41, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? Is Jesus having fun with us, or mm. well, like what would you say? You'd have a hard time reading that and not smiling a little bit. That's right. I'm sure of, the people who <laughs> listen to it. Yeah. Judge yeah, not that you be not judged. Right? Well, you know, I, I, have you ever tried to take something out of somebody's eye? I've, mm -hmm. I've had to do this for my wife a oh, time sure. or two, or out of my own eye, and yeah. you do it very carefully. carefully. But just imagine a two, two before stuck in your yeah. own eye while you're oh. trying to do that. <laughs> Make it a little hard. Pretty bad, yeah. So anyway, um, what I want you to explain to our viewers is what does it mean when it said a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now that doesn't make a bit of sense. I, I wanted to pour it into my Tupperware, Carolyn. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> why they poured it in the lap, but yeah. I, I think the clue we got from uh, John Jones last time is that um, this is just a way of saying that unlike what might normally be expected in the market, um, it's tamped down and given good measure. I, when you were saying that before, John, I thought of the image that Norman Rockwell has. Uh, uh, but yes. We all remember the Norman Rockwell <laughs> thing yes, where there's yeah. the scales mm -hmm. and the storekeeper is pressing down. He's and, touching it. That's yes. right. And the customer is pressing up. And down. <laughs> They're both kind of looking off like, <laughs> like nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> but here it says that's not going to be true because you're going to get full measure and it's going to spill over. I, I don't know why on the lap, but I guess you're holding something. Well, now, the, oh, yeah. what does this mean? A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running. What are they? That they're talking about food, I guess, flour or something, or what is this? Could be or is this yeah. grain. Grain. Mm -hmm. grain? It sounds like okay. grain. Yeah. The, the point is it's a transaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is saying, live your life generously. This is a call to open-heartedness, isn't it? Go the extra well, mile, the extra pound, the extra sure. amount. For sure, exactly. Yeah. And that's how the kingdom's made, and the more of it we do, the more the kingdom sort of yeasts its way mm -hmm. into the world. Don't be like the grocer in Lodi when I was a small child. He had the reputation that when you g went in to buy mm. vegetables and things and you weighed them, he weighed his hand. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. So what you were saying is uh, sometimes <laughs> true, I guess. You we know, never I thought to go and push on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that, Carolyn, reminds me of a neighbor who lived down the road from I lived in the country uh, yeah. when I was a boy on a farm, but I uh, used to go pick crops for a neighbor to, to the south of us. And when we would pick apples or berries or whatever, if there were a, a really particularly nice apple on the top <laughs> of the box <laughs> or a particularly nice berry on the top, he would pull a few apples aside, put that one down, and then cover it up. Because, And I asked him, why, why do you do that? Yeah. And he said, I, I don't want them to think that I am 
uh, trying to get them to buy it when the rest of them aren't like that. So I'd rather have them think that the ordinary ones mm -hmm. are what I'm selling, and when they get to that good one, yeah. then they'll know oh, they're getting full major. Very good. Well, I'll tell you another. When I was a, 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 a high school age, um, it was during the war, and there weren't people in the in San Joaquin Valley. It's kind of the breadbasket. It's like another state almost, because the crops are so good and they grow so well. And so they said, now, how many of you students would like to go out in the fields and cut celery? And I thought, well, all right, I'll try it, just because, you know, in the summertime, school wasn't there. So we'd get on a truck in the morning, and there's, or they had benches, and we'd all go out, and we'd go to the celery fields in the peat dirt. It would grow. I'm trying to picture this now, Carolyn. Oh, yeah, it's true. It's <laughs> true. And so we drive out there, and then we'd get off, and there was one of the teachers who was kind of telling us what to do. And we had these big lugs. You know what lug boxes yeah. are? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Believe yeah. me, I know. You pick the celery, and you go chop, and you put it in there, yeah. and you fill it up. Now, see, if you can get it to where it still is pretty fluffy and holds its shape in the sun, you can do pretty good, but if you don't, mm -hmm. you go over and he shakes it a little, and there's room for about another row. Oh, I see. <laughs> see? Yeah. So I'm just saying oh. that this is a good story to illustrate what they're talking yeah. about here. Because we got so much of luck, and I used to make $5 a day, and in those days, I was making more than my father, <laughs> just for the summer. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> that's, that's a good story. I, uh, <coughs> You can see me out there. I, um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm coming closer to it. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one more way in which the kingdom is upside down, isn't it? Yes. Live, live generously. Right. Live big-heartedly. That is not the way of this world. That's right. Yeah. And if you're getting some grain or something that's being weighed, yeah. push it down a little mm -hmm. so you get more than really what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. Well, I... Uh, Maybe I, I'd like to hear these biblical scholars say more about Jesus' humor because it's coming uh, up a couple of places, and especially in this thing about yes. the speck and the plank. Was Jesus funny? I guess you could ask it that way. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. It was funny. I think he had quite a sense of humor, and there are lots of things mm -hmm. in the Gospels mm -hmm. that I'm quite sure people yeah. would have smiled. And, uh, well, you know what Josephus says about Jesus? He's the only one that I know of that describes uh, what Jesus looked like when he was here on earth. That is uh, a person that wasn't, uh, you know, in the Bible or something. And J Josephus said that, that he was a, a, a good stature and he had a part down his head and the, the, the curls were just gently on his shoulder and said, no man has seen him laugh, seen him laugh. but he had a pleasant look on his face. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's true or not, you can look it up in Josephus. You all have a book of Josephus, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't know that part of it, but <coughs> whether anybody saw Jesus laugh, I think the people who heard him must have laughed. Must have laughed, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, this is one example. I think there are others. Any other leap to mind? Well, I think one that you, I've heard you talk yeah. about a number of times. <laughs> you can steal it. Is uh, <laughs> well. Why don't you go ahead? No, no. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, <laughs> well when when uh, when the people come and ask Jesus this very difficult question yeah. about this guy who uh, married a woman and he died, and so she married his next oldest brother, and he died and married his next oldest brother, which is what they were supposed to do. Yes, and, that was the uh, custom in those days. He he, he had seven. She, she had mm -hmm. seven husbands, and then they say, now here we've got you, Jesus, because Jesus talked about resurrection. Yeah. And they said, whose wife. wife is she going to be when you get to the kingdom? How would God solve a problem like that? And Jerry, what does he say? <laughs> well, he says, <laughs> in the resurrection, uh, now you have to keep in mind, the people who are asking the question don't believe in the resurrection. They're yes, Sadducees. They don't. Uh, they're Sadducees, no so they either. don't believe in the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So he says, in the resurrection, and I always stop at that point and think, well, they don't believe in the resurrection. Resurrection, anyway. that's right. You're going to be like angels. Mm -hmm. But what there were two things that they people all knew about Sadducees. They didn't believe in they the resurrection, and they didn't believe in angels. Yeah. 
Right. So Jesus mm -hmm. just says to them in the well, resurrection, it's, yeah, which it's you don't double believe gotcha. in. You're going to be like angels. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't believe in that either. Okay. <laughs> I think it would have been Don't you think people would have laughed yeah. when they oh, heard sure. him say that? I mean, it was kind of the perfect put down. Well, yeah. you, you think this is such a tough problem? It's simple. They'll, they'll be like angels. Yeah. They, you, no they didn't believe didn't in the angels. Married? They didn't believe in the angels, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, and yeah. he, he challenges them that they really aren't people of faith. What did they say to that? In that? Well, it, 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 we're not clear what they said, but the crowds, when they heard this, just said they were astonished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, John Jones, do you want to continue reading? Well, yes. So we're uh, we're taking the speck out of our neighbor's eye here, aren't we? Yes. Let's pick up and uh, go ahead with the next little section on the tree and its fruit and so forth. So uh, verse 43, and this happens to be the New Revised Standard here. Okay. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Uh, figs are not gathered from thorns, and gra nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good tree, uh, the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil, because it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So we're like trees. And if we're good trees, good fruit. And if we're bad trees, bad fruit. And it's something that everybody knew. He had them with him when he said, you're not going to get grapes out of thorns. Yeah. Yes. There's a twinkle in his eye there, too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, would you read this same verses in the Good News <coughs> Bible, please? Yeah, we're, uh, verse 43, aren't we? Luke chapter 6. So, um, yeah, here we go. I think um, over the page. Okay. A healthy tree, yeah, a healthy tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a poor tree bear good fruit. Every tree is known by the fruit it bears. You don't pick figs from thorn bushes or gather grapes from bramble bushes. A good person, uh, by analogy now he's bringing mm -hmm. out the lesson, a good person brings out good out of the treasure of good things in his heart, and a bad person brings out bad from the treasure of uh, bad things, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. So one more, one more little flag as to what the kingdom's made out of. Mm -hmm. uh, the kingdom um, is made up of people, first of all. It's not a political movement. It's not some kind of a socioeconomic program. It's people. Mm -hmm. and, and the way people behave has the magic about it to shift the atmosphere, shift the chemistry, shift the way things happen. And so how we talk can in fact establish new realities. Yes. Jesus understood that in a way where all of this, all of these verses hook back into the opening uh, application where he says when someone um, uh, makes you carry a burden for a mile, carry it an extra mile because you shift the dynamic of the relationship mm -hmm. then. First mile, you're marching according to your script and the centurion who swats you with the flat yes. side of the sword is acting according to his script. Yeah. But the second mile, you break the script, don't yes. you? And yes. it's, a, it's a new game now. You're in charge, <laughs> you're in control, and you are simply giving as the kingdom gives. All of this, in a way, is a kind of an unpacking of those implications. All right. And, and also, isn't he saying that the kinds of uh, reverse, the kind of reversal that he's talking about in values that's part of the kingdom is not simply an external matter. Yeah. Okay. It's not simply something you do, but it involves a whole transformation of life, a transformation of perspective, something a transformation <laughs> of values. Yeah. Some, that's right, yeah. something that you be, not just something you do. All right, uh, shall we go on and uh, may mm -hmm. I read this time? Sure. Out of the Good News Bible, we're going to go to, it's uh, chapter 6 of the book of Luke, and it's verse 46. It's called The Two House Builders. There's a lot of building going on around here, have you <laughs> noticed? Mm -hmm. A lot of building. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and yet don't do what I tell you? Anyone who comes to me and listens to my words and obeys them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man who, in building his house, dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. The river flooded over and hit the house, but could not shake it, because it was well built. But anyone who hears my words and does not obey them is like a man 
who built his house without laying a foundation. When the flood hit that house, it fell at once, and what a terrible crash that was. Mm. So how do we apply the story of two house builders in uh, uh, contemporary thought here? We're a long way from uh, when Jesus said this. How do we apply this to uh, our lives? Anybody? Well, I think what Jesus is emphasizing here is the difference mm -hmm. between the hearing and the doing, or the hearing and really taking it to heart, and that there are people who superficially respond mm -hmm. and say, oh, Lord, Lord, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that's not enough to respond at that superficial level. What you really need to do is take this to heart and have it be truly a transformation of your life so that you are doing the words that I speak, not just listening to them and uh, responding to them in a superficial kind of acceptance. Mm -hmm. Well, um, are you telling me that some people don't want to go to all the trouble to dig down deep and have a good foundation? You know, we're in earthquake mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. and when we built our house, we had a foundation that went down because uh, we're not far from the uh, fault, the fault line that goes through mm -hmm. Loma Linda. But uh, the builder, he wanted to be sure we had a good foundation. So applying that to our lives and our Christian experience, does that mean we should study, read the Bible, pray? What does it, I mean, not everybody has time. They have to get up. They have to go to work. They come home, eat, and fall into bed. They're tired. So how can they do this? How can they apply this? Well, I, John, I guess maybe you've already said it, and, uh, and I, or I may be missing something here, but in this paragraph, at least, it seems like the difference is between those who hear Jesus' words and put them into practice okay. and those who hear the words and don't, don't. put them into practice. Yep. And in another program, we were talking about the surprise that, uh, that Gandhi, Mahandas Gandhi, had that some people were Christians but just didn't seem to <laughs> accept the teachings of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that puzzled him. And um, it probably should puzzle us, I suppose, yes. although mm -hmm. uh, all of us can grow more deeply in that. But to me, the take-home message is that this sermon and the rest of the teachings of Jesus have practical implications. Okay. I mean, they're not just ideas. You have to incorporate them in your life. Otherwise, it's superficial. It is superficial. Yeah. But you have to search, search out truth. Otherwise, you're liable to be fooled. And so if you search out truth, I think that God will lead you and your mind, the Holy Spirit will help you to find what truth is, right? Mm -hmm. Some teachers have emphasized the, the fact, and I believe this myself, that your understanding of the truth changes in the practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's even one uh, theologian who wrote a book once it's typical of systematic theology to work out the beliefs and then talk about the application. And he started with applications mm -hmm. and said, you know, in a way, good theology comes tumbling along after because it's, if you follow Jesus, it starts with uh, a changed life. It does. And, mm -hmm. and, and the beliefs take their shape out of that. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that's important. I do too. Anybody else? Yes, it's not just a matter of study. It is that for sure. Yes. But it's a matter of, of doing. It's a matter of actually living it out. Uh, Jerry has said it well, but I, I don't want us to miss that. It's, it's not just a matter of um, praying, reading scripture, important as all of that is. It's a matter of actualizing it all seven days of the week, not just in church. And sometimes our students, we I'm connected with the university here just down the street. <coughs> Sometimes our students will be studying, let's say, one of the health sciences, uh -huh. nursing, medicine, dentistry. They're also studying, because we're a faith-based institution, the reasons of faith that we have for caring about people mm -hmm. and incorporating that into the study. All of that's going on. They're very busy in their studies. And then they'll go off to 
a, a place of desperate need. Mm -hmm. It may be another country. It may be somewhere mm -hmm. in this country. And then they come back changed. Their understanding of what it is they're studying and the reasons for why they're doing is different. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's a different kind of knowledge. And you can't get that knowledge just sitting in a classroom or reading a book or hearing the words. I, to mm -hmm. me, that's why I think Jesus says you can, you can hear the words when you put them into practice yeah. and a lot of times for these <coughs> young people it's the first real opportunity they have to engage a person in desperate need with some very practical skills that mm -hmm. they've begun to mm -hmm. learn and yeah. now they can begin to put them into practice. Mm -hmm. I think that's why uh, the medical school and the dental school and different schools they get the young people together. They will even say you know stay out of school for a year if you're interested in missionary work and they'll go to Gimbi in Ethiopia, or they'll go to Africa, they'll go to, sh what is that, sh Chad? Chad, yeah. Yes, and uh, places where, I mean, it, it's, it, it's desperate. They don't even have enough medicines or things to do. Uh, it's, uh, things that I read about are just horrific. And yet they come back with a story, and they're changed. Yeah. They're and just on fire to do yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the metaphor here that Jesus is using, this imagery, I think really works because one sense that I have when they come back, especially if they have been open to what we're talking about mm -hmm. here, is that they're deeper people. Yeah. Uh, oh, you absolutely. can see that yeah. deepening mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yes. process going yeah. on. Yes. They're not superficial people yeah. in the same way. Yeah. Um, I, it's been our goal here at our place to have every student who's willing uh, go out and have that kind of experience. And we've made good progress in having that experience for uh, the majority of the students. Our hope is to have it possible for everyone. Yes. Isn't it interesting? Jesus puts this in terms of uh, the polarity between hearing the word and doing it. Yes, yes. But there's another polarity between hearing it and mouthing it. There are so many mm. people who will indeed chant mm -hmm. the ritual formulas, Lord, Lord, in their prayers, in their whatever it may be. But nonetheless, that doesn't cut it either. We so often tend to mouth the words of piety because that's what we think God wants us to say, what you think God wants to hear. It's not a matter of that either. It is, in fact, a matter of rolling up the sleeves and digging in, doing. Uh, yeah. And if you've done it, you're changed forever. No question. No question about that. Well, it looks like we've come to the end of this sermon. Uh, <laughs> yes. I, did, I, don't, I doubt if we exhausted it. Well, at this point in Matthew, Matthew kind of draws a line yes, across it Matthew all. Yes, Matthew 7, 24 yeah. to 27. And he says, yes, that's right. And th he, has, he has several points in his gospel where he draws a line across things and starts over as a particular little formula that he uses, and this mm -hmm. is one of those places. You want uh, to read that? Well, uh, we're in Luke, and maybe someday we'll do Matthew. Okay. <laughs> so, right. uh, meanwhile, uh, Jesus is not going to only speak words, he's going to act. And so we see him now acting, yes. starting mm -hmm. with chapter yes. 7. If we want to move on at that point, is it? Is okay, that, uh, sure. <clears throat> Jesus heals this uh, servant uh, of the centurion, and it's a lengthy story. I don't know if there's anything we want to reflect on back over this whole discourse of Jesus in chapters 5 and 6 before we rush onward. Uh, as we step back and take the broad overview, anything we want to, uh, what hits us now? Uh, what kind of picture do we see of Jesus in these words before we move on? What well, I look at it broadly, yeah. John, what comes to me is that, and, and we've said this, but I think John Brunt used the word reversal, or maybe yeah. you did, that, mm. that here you have almost like a constitution for the kingdom. Yeah. Uh, these are the basic principles, just like mm -hmm. we have a constitution that forms our understanding of what it means to be a people in this country. This is the constitution for the kingdom that Jesus has brought to, to us. Yeah. This, is the what, this is what citizenship in right. this kingdom looks like. It's yeah. different. So you're saying just going out and giving Bible studies to the neighbors, which I would shrink from, there's other ways that you can live a life that if you live a good life, people will want to know what it is you believe. I find that over in, happened over in China. Um, and then there's people who want to go out to places like Chad and Africa and 
um, Afghanistan. Afghanistan, <laughs> <laughs> right. And to start a, a hospital and, mm. and helping over there. And I think they're being successful. But these people, to me, are doing, well, their lives may not be perfect, but God accounts what they are doing as righteousness, mm -hmm. in, my, in my thought. Yeah. And the customs of the kingdom are pretty much the opposite of the customs there. of the world. Yes, yes. So that where the world values fame and fortune and, um, and is built significantly on uh, a kind of vengeance and retribution yeah. yes. um, and violence, the kingdom is built on love and that love gives way to concern for those who are poor. Yes. And it also renounces violence right. and retribution right. and vengeance. It's, so it's a great upheaval. Mm -hmm. It's a different constitution. I think that I'm so glad that they're letting the students go out and do mm -hmm. things like this. Yeah. But not only students can do it. A lot of people can do it, even though they think they can't. They just go out, and first thing you know, you're doing it. Mm. And it's a wonderful experience. You never forget it, oh, ever. Plenty of opportunities right nearby. Yes, too. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. If we just have a few seconds left, uh, John, you want to add a few words to this? Well, I think uh, both John and Jerry have summed it up very well, that it is a constitution for the kingdom, that to live for the kingdom is to live a certain way now. I think yes. so often we think of the kingdom as simply something that's in the future. But for Jesus, yeah. the kingdom is a set of values. Mm -hmm. It's a way of living mm -hmm. that begins now when we make a decision for the kingdom. Yes, eventually God will fill all in all and the kingdom will be the whole universe. But right now, it's not just future. It's wherever people will adopt these values. Yeah. And this is Carolyn Thompson for Searching for Answers.